It is game number two of the Bolts and Cogs versus the Hound Dog series. Game three of the overall series. The whole Discord Rivals thing. We saw a massive pitcher's duel in game one. And game two sees left-handers Immaculate Vincent and Squish and Duck on the hill. We'll see what they can do. Kobe O to lead us off here. Facing off against Enduck. Squishy's got ridiculous curveball. Insane drop. And Kobe's got his first hit of the series. Base hit to center field. Up next, we got Eric Brzezinski, the shortstop. Also was an 0-4 against Sullivan Ert in game one. Sullivan is currently the MVP of choice for, I think, basically everything. Oh, that's a deep fly ball in right field. And it's gone. Eric Perzitsky. Already they're on the board. They scored no runs in game one. The Hound Dogs have got two here in game two. Great work by Perzinski. And, well, welcome to the series, Squish. Gay Folk stepping up. First pitch slayer, Ma uh, the uh, Magic Hands defensive guy. Already some mojo issues for... Squish end duck and a base hit through the middle. It's not helping. Three straight runners have reached, including a home run. Speaking of home runs, the big power bat of Brock Earp stepping up. Didn't get any comments last time as to whether he looks like Chris Weidman. I think he does. Strike one <laughs> from end duck. Ball one. It's a good thing that the, uh, the Bolts and Cogs have a very fresh bullpen tonight. So... In theory, just a theory, they have the ability to go, you know, to that bullpen early as Brocker puts a base hit through. So two on, nobody out. Christian Axelson, the third baseman, steps up. Here's a first pitch prayer, but a pretty good guy otherwise. But you kind of get that one freebie, which Enduck misses high on. Not surprising, Enduck has incredibly low in accuracy. Even when his even even when the mojo is good, Enduck has got low accuracy. And that's gonna load the bases. I doubt anyone will trust Kaufman's arm on the way home there. Cody Ossenmacher steps up. Center fielder. Mostly defensive option. But here he is. With the bases loaded. Big chance to drive home some runs. There's a weird sound issue there on my end. I don't know if you guys got it or not. Oh! Strikeout for Enduck. That's a big deal. Brings up Taylor Andrade. Or Andrade. He sat off the uh, first game. Fallon, I think it's Talon Nash, right? But game two sees Andrade in the lineup. 2 0. 3 0. Just missed with that third pitch. And he will walk a run in. So Andrade already with an RBI. Murray Greer. The speedster stepping up. Ball one. Ball two. Enduck is looking like a man in serious trouble. Fly ball to right field. Uh, that is... Going to stay in, but that will be an easy run. Sack fly for Murray Greer. Breaks up Immaculate Vincent, who's uh, gonna bat before he even pitches. <laughs> Not much of a hitter here. Very few of the pitchers are outside of some of the absolute top end pitchers. But he's got a little bit of contact, a little bit of power. He's got some decent speed. If it wasn't two outs, I'd suggest throwing a bunt, but, uh, well, a four-pitch walk will do. So the bases are loaded again. We're back to the top of the order with Kobe O. And we'll see if he can bring in some runs. By the way, Przinsky, who hit the home run, is on deck. Strike one. Owen two. And Duck gets ahead for a change. And a ground ball to Titus Jenkins will end the inning. But my lord, do the Bolts and Cogs have a gap to make up here? Jeff Kaufman, Doug Bagwell. Will lead us off. Flick Bean also do a 
the superstar studded outfield of the Bolts and Cogs to face Immaculate Vincent, who is kind of like Enduck in a lot of ways. Left-handed, off-speed, reliant pitcher. Low accuracy, decent velocity. It's, a, it's very much like a mirror match. <laughs> Doug Bagwell do up, or not do up, up at the plate. Strike one, one and one. One and two. And a single through the infield. Base hit for Douglas Bregenstein. Brings up Flick B. No hits in game one. Should be mentioned, Kevin Greer, who started for the Hound Dogs in game one, gave a exceptional accounting of himself. So, there was not a lot to build on for the Bolts and Cox. Tyus Jenkins. See what he can do here. Big power bat. Ball one. Ball two. Not a great arm behind the plate. There is base stealing potential here against Andrade. But a pop-up will end the inning. And we'll go to the top of the second. Brzezinski, Folk, and Earp do up. I assume we'll see Enduck still come out. We saw Toby Garcia get absolutely shellacked in the uh, Yeah Boys versus Sky High game. And they gave him, I think it was two innings. So I imagine Enduck will try to start things out here. One and two. And he gets Brzezinski. So revenge for the two-run home run with a strikeout. Number 24. Brings up Gabe Folk. Ball one. Followed by a strike. Strike two. There's a lot more to like end Duck's game than just the curveball, but you'll 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 see a lot of it. Back well under that one. Brings up Brock Earp. Ball one from Enduck. And Earp sends a two-out single into left field. Flick Bean corrals it and keeps it two, just a single. Now back, third baseman, number 22. Christian Axelson. Axelson. Got 250 on the campaign. Ground ball through the middle for a base hit. The little man, smallest guy in the, possibly one of the smallest guys in the, uh, <laughs> Cody Ossenmacher. Do up, he struck out last time up. It's been a better second inning here for Enduck, but he is up over 40 pitches. So, in addition to the low mojo that he still has, he is also starting to fatigue. And a high fly ball into left center. Flick Bean takes charge and makes the play. Alex Porchetto, Marshall Colbert, and GG Tremundo do up here in the bottom half of the second inning. Alex Porchetto. Alex Porchetto. Looking to make things happen. Whoa, that almost hit him. 2-0 from Vincent. 3-0. 3-1. Round ball through the middle, and Porchetto has his first hit of the series. I think he had a draw. I think he had a walk in the uh, first game of Henry Serves. Marshall Colbert. <sighs> Low power. Decent contact hitter. A little bit of speed. See what he can do here. Fouls off the first offering from... Immaculo Vincent. Ball inside. Immaculo has not been nope. immaculate today, but he has been getting the better of the lefty battle. Ground ball to Kobio. He'll turn the double play. That'll bring up Gigi Tremondo, the second baseman. 
one of the most defensively talented middle infielders in the league. One and one. High fly ball. That's got a chance. That'll go off the top of the wall for a double. Nice relay by Bagwell. Almost got the play done. But not by Bagwell. Wrong team. Hulk. Brings up Tori Yates, the third baseman. Takes ball one. Takes ball two. Fouled off, two and one. Two and two. Still two and two. Checking on the potential steal from Tremendo. Ground ball to Christian Axelson. He makes the play and that'll end the inning. So Andrade, Greer and Vincent do up. Here in the top of the third against Squish and Duck. Who is leading off next inning. So it'd be interesting to see if the uh, team tries to pull a double swap. At some point. One and one. Two and one. High fly ball by Andrade. That's got a chance. But it is going to die at the wall. Still a nice double for the catcher. Flick Bean couldn't make the play cleanly. Brings up Murray Greer. Got an RBI earlier on today with a sacrifice fly. Has a runner in scoring position, but will probably need a little bit more than a sack fly this time. Eight hits allowed by Enduck. Two and one. Oh, a bunt. And that one gets away from Porchetto. The runner does not advance, and the walk is issued. So two on for the pitcher, Immaculo Vincent. Makes sense, actually, that you would perhaps walk rear. Sorry. My phone making a appearance <laughs> in, the, uh, in the recording here. One and one. One and two. Vincent trying to lay down a bunt, but with two strikes, that's a gamble. Foul ball is a strikeout on a bunt. And because of the poor running of Andrade, they will get the out of third. Number 71, Kobe. Kobe O, two on. One out. One for two on the day. One for six, I think, in the series. One and one. One and two. And Duck checking on the runner. Don't blame him. Murray Greer is a massive stealing threat over there at second base. One and two. Ground ball. Double play. Not quite. kobio has got the wheels to beat it out and give a shot to Eric Brzezinski. See what the team captain can do. The answer is we will have a replacement of Jasmine Baines. Not a double swap. Interesting. So Baines will bat. I assume. In the number nine spot. Two and two. Gets the strikeout. So Baines comes in, strikes out Prasinski to end the threat. And now we'll lead off, followed by Jeff Kaufman and Doug Bagwell. She's not a bad hitter. She's got a little bit of pop. But not a lot of contact. Good speed. And a ground ball to Brock Earp. We'll end any discussion <laughs> on, her, on her offensive abilities probably for now. Jeff Kaufman. He led off game one with a home run. Oh, you bet that's a strike. So can he cue the comeback music here against Immaculate Vincent? 0-2. Oh 1-2. Two. Two. Brown ball. Brzezinski lays out. Makes the play. Gets the out. 
and will face Doug Bagwell, who's making an early case for the uh, the hitting the batting title in this uh, tournament, being 720 so far at the plate. One and one. Ground ball. Two and two. Still two and two. Line drive. Well, kind of more of a little looper to Axelson makes the play. Three up, three down. Baines heads back out to face Gabe Folk, Brocker, and Christian Axelson. Or not Axelson. Pardon me, wrong team. Wrong team. Oh, no, it is actually something. Diving grab by Flick Bean. Rocker, two for two on the day. Completely different pitcher in yet now, though. Be more velocity oriented and accurate. Jasmine Baines. As opposed to our previous offering of Squish and Duck. Two and one. And Earps got himself his third hit. Brock Earp swimming, swinging the hot lumber today. Now the third base, number 22, Chris Christian Axelson. Two for two, pair of singles on the board. See what he can do here in the top of the fourth. 0-2. Round ball. And that is strike three. You are <clears throat> out of here. Cody Ossenmacher 0 for 2 on the day. He's got some low mojo. No hits yet in the in the series. Strike one. And Tremendo cannot get up for that one. Base hit for Austin Marker. Looks up Taylor Andrade. One for one today, double and a walk. Although embarrassingly got picked off at third base on a sack punt. Let's see what he can do here. One and one. One and two. And Baines with the third strikeout. So Andrade is retired for the first time. Flick Bean, uh, Titus Jenkins, and Alex Porchetto do up. In the bottom of the fourth, this Bolts and Cogs team still looking for a big moment here. Ball inside. Ball one from Immaculate Vincent. And Bean finds a nice gap there, but it'll be limited to a single. That shallow right field wall coming into play. Brings up Titus Jenkins. Titus. Titus Jenkins. Big power bat looking to Stee Reich. 2 0. 2 and 1. And that'll land fair. That'll probably send Bean over to third. Murray Greer does not have a great arm. And Bean's going to score to break the shutout. RBI double for Titus Jenkins. Alex Brings up Alex Porcato. The catcher. Ball one. Ball two. Two and one. Three and one. That slider not working out. And the walk is issued. Marshall Colbert has not had a successful series yet. But a big chance here. He represents the game tying run. Vincent opens up with a pitch out, but finds the strike on the second pitch. Two and one. Two and two. 
Round ball. That's double play bait. Gobio to Brock Earp. And Gigi Tremondo will bat with a runner on third. Chance to bring a run home still, despite the double play. Vincent's numbers are starting to drop here as he gets north of 50 pitches. He's not been the most efficient of, uh, of uh, pitchers, of course. Never will be with the kind of accuracy he's pitching. Two and two. Fly ball. Right field. Folks got it. The Bolts of Cogs get a run back. It'll be Greer, Vincent, and O. Looking to respond. Murray Greer at the plate here against Jasmine Baines. Strike one. Strike two. Ball one. And that's a strikeout. Fans Murray Greer. The pitcher, number 32. What was that from the ump? <laughs> All right, pitcher-on-pitcher pitcher action here. Wondering how long Baines can really go. You can see the numbers are starting to drop. And you, you would theoretically want Baines available for things like Game 4, Game 5, if this series goes there. So out throwing the arm today wouldn't make a lot of sense. Tobio. Two down. Nobody on. Five strikeouts, though. Baines has been getting the job done. Two and two. Hot fly. Perchetto's under it. Makes the play. And it'll be Tori Yates, Jasmine Baines, and Jeff Coppin do up here in the bottom of the fifth inning. See what Yates can do here. Macula Vincent back on the hill. That's down. Probably got to be thinking that the nope. the Hound Dog bullpen might be up and running. We haven't seen it take action, of course, as we had that double per we had a double complete game in game one, which is insane. Jasmine. Brings up Jasmine Baines, the pitcher spot, and they're gonna let her bat. One and two. That's inside. Two and two. Repeat. You're out. Got him. Big strikeout for Immaculate Vincent. Ends up Jeff Coppin with nobody on. Two down. Bottom of the fifth. And a 4-1 lead from Vincent still. I wouldn't say take Vincent out now, but I'm just saying that, like, if he's in here by the seventh inning, I'm going to be surprised as Kaufman singles into left field and brings up Doug Bagwell. He of the slightly better tattoos this time around. <laughs> Strike one. Ground ball. Brzezinski's got it, but a bad... Ugh, that was not a good throw. But Brocker corrals it to end the inning. Eric Brzezinski, Gabe Folk, and the now aforementioned Brocker do up here Eric in the top half of the sixth inning. Still facing Jasmine Baines. Who's worked a solid two and a third. Shutout innings, two hits, five strikeouts. Two and one. And Przinski has a multi-hit game. He's a base stealing threat. Against anybody. Forget the backup catcher Taylor Andrade. Oh, pardon me. Uh pardon me, this is poor kettle behind play. I keep mixing up who's on what team. Anyways, I think we're we're running out of time here on Baines. Those ratings are going very low. Those bars are in the red. 40 pitches in. They've gotten a quality outing here from Baines to stop the bleeding. Strikes out Gabe Folk. Now 
batting. The first base number two. Brings up Brock Earp. Three for three on the day is the first base. And it will be Casper Ziegler, the left-hander who enters the game. That's a strike. One and one. Two and one. Three and one. Full count. K Collector is in play for Casper. And Brock Earp is retired for the first time with a sharply hit double play ball. Flick Bean, Tyus Jenkins, Alex Porchetto do up here in the bottom of the sixth. Maculo Vincent is apparently coming out for the start of the inning. He's on 74 pitches through five. Has allowed one run along with six hits. Two and out. Two and one. Full count. Or not full count. Two and two. Now it's a full count. I was just one pitch ahead of myself. <laughs> Flick Bean with the base hit. In the center field. That'll bring up Titus Jenkins. One for two with an RBI double today. That's his only hit of the series, I do believe. Bean's got good speed. Excellent speed, I would dare say. And that is going to be a nice play by Gabe Folk. And maybe, yeah, it is. It's a double up. Gabe Folk with the denial. Just absolutely shutting the door on this Bolts and Cogs team. And Uriel Navarro is in from the bullpen. Your patented power pitcher. Classic reliever. And a ground ball to Cobio will end the inning. So five and two thirds from Immaculate Vincent. He leaves with a 4 1 lead. Christian Axelson, Cody Asimacher, and Taylor Andrade. Third baseman, number 22. Trying to respond here. And they will face off against Casey or Casper Ziegler. That time. No, that's inside. Two and Strike. Two and one. And a hot single into center field. For access. The center field, number 22. Cody Ossenmacher. Facing off against Casper Ziegler. Foul ball into the stance. You bet that's a strike. 0 oh 2. Ziegler is a K collector. High strikeout kind of guy. Nope. Ball. 1 and 2. Still one and two. And there's the strikeout. Taylor Andrade. One for two. Double and a walk today. That was Ziegler's first strikeout of the day. As the bullpen for the Bolts and Cogs doing their best to try to hang around in this game. And that will drop, and that will be a double. Oh, Flick Bean did not play that well, and that's going to cost him a run. 5-1. Now back, the left fielder, number 32. Ends up Murray Greer. Navarro is on deck. I wouldn't imagine we'll see a, uh, a pinch hitter here, especially not with a 5-1 ball game, but we'll see. One and two. Rear with a grounder that will advance the runner. So it's a runner on third for Uriel Navarro, who does not hit well. <laughs> does not hit well. That is a standard bullpen pitcher stat line right there. You bet that's a strike. Oh and two. No. Gets away from the catcher. But no run scores. 
And Ziegler strikes out Navarro to end the inning. I probably would have gone with a pinch hitter there, to be honest. Marshall Colbert, Gigi Tremondo, and Tori Yates do up. In the bottom of the seventh. Marshall Colbert. Facing Uriel Navarro. Gets him looking with the slider. That's nice work. And that gets away from Kobe O for a base hit. Brings up GG Tremondo. One for two with a double today. And Wade Kruk is going to enter the game as a pinch hitter. Interesting move here. Kruk a first baseman by Dre. Definitely nowhere for him to play in the infield right now. Tremendo has not been a liability. If anything, you would go with the pinch hit for Tory Yates. And Kruk strikes out. Speaking of Tory Yates, there she is. You also have the pitcher do up next. There just were a lot of places where I would have... Uh, I personally would have much preferred to use that that, uh, that pinch hit move. Owen 2. Whiffer engaged. Contact is made. One and two from Navarro. And there's a strikeout. Brings up... Casper Ziegler. And there is a pinch hitter. It is indeed the A's pitcher, Sullivan Yurt, coming off the bench. He's got a base hit. <laughs> He's like, I gave you guys a complete game in game one. I demand to know why I'm being employed as a pinch hitter in a game where we're down 5-1. to one. <laughs> Base hit comes through, though. Jeff Coppin. Chance to make a big difference here. Ball, that's it, ball one. High fly ball that is staying in. And it will win the inning. Gabe Folk with the play. He's had a hell of a day up right field. Kobeo, Eric Brzezinski, and Gabe Folk do up. I don't think you will pitch. I imagine we'll see another bullpenner. And we do Waldo Acosta entering the game. And Mia Osteroni will play second base. Ball inside. Ball low. 2-0 from Acosta. Ground ball to Titus Jenkins. Lay is made. Brings up Eric Brzezinski to RBI day. Multi-hit effort. Strike one. Strike two from Acosta. One and two. And that's a strikeout. That's a big strikeout. Gabe Folk. Two down here in the top of the eighth. For the visitors. One and one. Two and one. Three and one from Acosta. We'll go to a full count. And the walk is issued. Brock Earp. Three for four today. This is the kind of matchup he likes. A right-hander with velocity that he can get his power on. Two and up. Just a four-seamer and a change-up for Acosta. Very limited pitch count. Or pitch selection, I should say. And he'll walk Brocker with a wild pitch. Christian Axelson. Chance to make a little bit of difference here. Strike one from Acosta, followed by strike two. Heating up the 99-mile-an-hour fastball, and he'll end the inning. 
Doug Bagwell, Flick Bean, and Tyus Jenkins. Should be mentioned, nine hits, only getting one run. It's got to hurt for the Bolts and Cogs. This is a team led by this man, Doug Bagwell, that prides itself on efficiency and being able to make every kick count. Uriel Navarro continues to work here in the eighth inning. He's on 20 pitches. One would think his maximum would be somewhere around 40. And he strikes out Doug Bagwell. Flick Bean. Two for three today with a pair of singles. Strike one. Oh, and two from Navarro. Flick Bean has immense power. Do not let him get good contact. Do not let him get the barrel of the bat on here. Because this guy is immensely talented. One and two. Two and two. He fans him with the 100 mile an hour. So <laughs> as long as he can throw out the 100 mile an hour, I don't think that there's a problem. With his cardio, with his stamina, with his shoulder, with his elbow, with his wrist, with everything. Strike one to Tyus Jenkins. Strike two. Navarro is locked in. But Jenkins fights it off and has... He's going to go for two because Murray Greer did not play that cleanly in left field. And it's going to work out. He's up Alex Porchetto. See what he can do here. As he faces off with Uriel Navarro, who just lost his mojo boost and immediately allows a single. I would go to the bullpen right now if I were the Hound Dogs. Marshall Colbert at the plate. But it will be Navarro to pitch. He does get that run stopper or that rally stopper. Tag. a stolen base for Porchetta. Ground ball. Axelson got it. Inning over. Cody Austin, Mocker, Taylor, Andrade, and Murray Greer do up. In the top of the ninth. The center field, number 22, Cody Austin, Mocker. And it looks like Waldo Acosta will remain on the hill. Despite the battles he is having with his control at the moment. One inning, pi one inning pitch, two walks, two strikeouts is a interesting stat line to say the least. As Awesome Mocker fouls it off and it's two and two. Full count. Round ball to Acosta. And that is the first ball in play for him. Seven, Second action. Taylor Andrade, two doubles today. Walk two RBIs. He's made a big statement that, like, you know, maybe you need to look at me as the catcher of choice for this team. They allow a stolen base, though. That's gone. Taylor Andrade, three hit day, all extra base hits. Goes deep for a solo shot here. Just a little insurance run. Three RBI day. Brings up Murray Green. And Jack Hunt will enter the game. Really emptying the bullpen out here for the uh, Bolts and Cogs. This is their fourth bullpenner of the day. There's only one left down in there. Three and one from Hunt. Full count. Just found the top of the strike zone there. Full count. Gets him. Murray Greer goes down swinging. That brings up the pitcher, Ural Navarro. I would imagine a pinch hitter here. Navarro, not a good hitter. Someone you probably don't want going out there. Yeah, there we go. Kevin Greer. So the starter from game one 
for both teams. Sullivan Yurt and Kevin Greer called off the bench uh, to handle some pinch hitting duties. One and two. Two and two. Full count. And Hunt strikes out. Bob in the ninth, five run lead. Mia Osteroni, Tori Yates, and Jack Hunt do up. I doubt Greer will pitch. He's in a similar state to Sullivan Yurt. You've got bullpen. And indeed, it will be Charlotte Drake, the long reliever they call in. Interesting. Not the closer. Oh, and two, or one and two. And there's the strikeout. Tori Yates steps on up. 0 for 3 on the day. I imagine we'll see a pinch hitter for Jack Hunt. 1 and 1. Ground ball. Brzezinski makes the play. That does bring up the pitcher spot, Jack Hunt. He'll bat. Wow. This is an impressive. I mean, I know he's got decent power, but that's a low contact number to be asking for to keep the game alive. One and two. Two and two. And that's a foul ball. Murray Greer unable to run it down. Full count. And that's a strikeout. The ump loves it. The ump loves it. So 6-1 is your final. The Hound Dogs even the series at two, despite actually giving up 11 hits. That's, uh, that's an interesting stat line to have 11 hits in just a single run. Multi-hit games for Flick Bean. Titus Jenkins, Alex Borchetto. So there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of potential offense. Three hit days though for Brock Earp, Christian Axelson, and Taylor Andrade. Immaculate Vincent gets the win. He was well, he didn't give up a lot of runs. I guess that's what it comes down to. Navarro with a solid effort off the vent, uh, off the bullpen, along with Charlotte Drake. Squish and Duck got beat up. Jasmine Baines, Casper Ziegler, Waldo Costa, and Jack Hunt. A lot of strikeouts, though. 14 Ks. Andrade, Brzezinski, and Jenkins, your three stars. So game three coming at you sometime later this week. Game two of Ya yeah Boys vs. Sky High will be the next episode of the Discord Rivals series.